and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Neoform Elementals. Hey, what's up, Angry Ben? Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime sub. All right, so what we have here is we have a deck uh, that was built by a, um, a subscriber here to the channel, Disposable Hero, that looks really, really cool. So we're playing our Elemental Tribal deck, which I haven't played in just a just a straight up elemental tribal deck yet the cavalier deck that we just played was kind of like that but we just have we have a whole bunch of elemental creatures and then we got our chandras and our neoforms also so of course like all of our all elemental decks really they're they're just basically built around risen reef this card is so 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 strong um you know every elemental that enters the battlefield you get that trigger and you either draw a card or uh, put a land into play if your top card's a land or a spell. <laughs> um, so what? Uh, that is a cool combination with Chandra. I haven't been able to play these two cards together yet, so this is going to be the first time. So whenever we zero and we put two uh, elementals into play with Chandra's ability, we get to have two Risen Reef triggers, which is pretty awesome. Haven't been able to do that yet. The card that's a little different in here that I'm uh, I'm interested to see how it works out is the Thunderkin Awakener. So, you know, we could just have, like, mana creatures here. I think that's the the, com the popular thing to have in the two-mana slot are just mana creatures. Uh, but we have these Thunderkin Awakeners. So, you know, whenever it attacks, you choose an elemental creature card with toughness less than the Awakener's toughness and put it back onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. And then, um, and the, then the next end step, you sacrifice it. <clears throat> so as you see, it'll, it starts with a toughness of two. So the only things that have less toughness than it are the Risen Reefs, which people are going to be trying to kill immediately, and these Scampering Scorchers. So I think what's going to be pretty common is like we play the Awakener, or sorry, we attack with the Awakener, bring back Risen Reef, and then second main, uh, Neoform away the Risen Reef because we'd have to sacrifice it anyway. Or maybe we bring back Scourger and then Neoform away the Scourger. You know, so we're going to be... That's, I think, one main use for Neoform is to be getting uh, rid of these things that we would be sacrificing anyway. But the other thing is, even though this is just a 1-2 to start with, it does grow bigger because of Omnith's ability here. Whenever our lands enter the battlefield under our control, we're putting 1-1 counters on an elemental. So we can put 1-1 counters on the Awakener to make it bigger so it can actually get back other things and so on. Um, so that's something else that we get to do also. But yeah, our our main our main core of our deck is the Awakener, the Risen Reef, the Om, Omnath. That's our main core. Like whenever we're neoforming away these things, we're get, probably going to be getting Omnaths um, and uh, doing damage and stuff like that. So that's kind of our core. Uh, you know, we do have like one of each of these cavaliers at the top end also that we could get you know have a scourger get rid of we could sack a scourger and, and bring in one of these things also um so yeah so we got to, we get to do some pretty fun stuff here we are playing the unclaimed territories to help our make our mana better uh, it doesn't help us cast chandra or neoform so i'm i'm a little worried about our red sources for chandra since we're playing four unclaimed territories we still have 15 red sources so that's something i'm a little worried about um but there we go. All right, let's 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 give this a try. This looks fun, janky, fun, amazing, amazingness. Yeah, I'm excited to play this deck. Didn't have time for it yesterday, unfortunately. Kind of ran out of time. And Hawkeye's up here all ready to go. We got Chandra's Ember Kitty in the deck. One of Hawkeye's favorite cards from M20. All right, what do you think, Hawkeye? Is this a keep? Keep or not keep? I'll just keep it. If we don't draw any, you know, if we need so we need one of our top two cards to be a three mana or less card to make this hand pretty good. That's all we need. 
seems like that's pretty realistic. I like with our three color deck that we have good mana and everything. Yeah, yeah, we'll try a cat tribal deck again with new Ajani Planeswalker, definitely. For Hawkeye. We'll make a cat tribal deck. Yeah, the hand's slow. Stone Quarry. Hands perfect. Chandra, you need more control. Go get him, buddies. Yeah, now that there's the red white gain life land, even could just you know that's a common. That's even better than stone quarry. Danto Vanguard. That card's pretty good. I guess I was supposed to make these these things first. I guess we could have made one of these a, a two one. I think Hawkeye likes white for his I think that's his favorite color in magic. Say hi to my fiery friends. There's a lot of cats in white. And you know, Johnny's is definitely his favorite planeswalker. Yeah, actually, Hawkeye really isn't that big of a fan of other cats uh, in general. He doesn't get along too well with other cats. Hmm. I feel like this 5-4 creature is just going to get really big, and I probably shouldn't block with it. Where's right now? Ah, so this is a feather deck. It is. It is a feather deck. Well, this doesn't use my mana well at all, but I need to get rid of Cranko. That card. That card can do some ridiculous stuff. So even though that doesn't use my mana well, I gotta just get rid of that. Yurok's really good in standard. Our the deck we just played, the Soulside Cavaliers deck, had a couple Yurok's in there, and it was a really really strong deck. Yep, gotta respect the Krenko. Anyone need a fire started? No? Too bad. Speaking of things you gotta respect, gotta respect the feather. Oh no! I had to play my land first? I'm just so used to like Dire Fleet Daredevils and all the other cards that are like you can play it this turn. Oh no, I messed that up. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't get to do it until end of turn, huh? 
Okay, well, first first time messing that up. Fight fire with fire. New cards, you always gotta mess stuff up. And learn. Well, that's unfortunate. Hmm. No, you can't redo that. No, I already I already did the minus ability. I already chose a target and everything, you can't go back. Yep, always got to, with new cards, always got to mess stuff up first before you, and learn, and then not do that again. Okay. Let's see. I guess I'll still attack. So then being down to six, I feel like we can maybe kind of squeeze this win out with these Scourgers. Yep, should have played the land first. Wait, are they just leaving themselves dead? All right, well, it looks like I'm going to lose now. That's unfortunate. We would have won this game if I would have just lava coiled. Okay. Alright, 
So that's nine. Ten. Yeah, the battle pass with the with the cat. It's my in-game Hawkeye. So Hawkeye can be in the game with me. The indestructible land or the indestructible card really not ideal. Just all five color like it's the five colors of magic that you can change. You know, white, blue, black, red, green. As far as the cat goes, there, the white is really like a yellow though, and the black is like a purple. Yeah, so that's red. And the next one's green. And then white. Blue. Black. Red. Hey, Perry Grip, welcome back. So, I mean, attacking with Overgrowth Elemental doesn't really make sense because they just cast the indestructible thing. So that doesn't really help us either. Um, well, I guess I'll play this thing. All right, Perry Grip sub number nine on the day. Thanks for that continued support there, Perry. Oh, sorry, I just realized I had this muted. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry, I was I was saying that, uh, yeah, Juki, I realized I should just be playing red, white, and blue decks for today. But, um, hmm, that's a problem. It's all, it's all a problem. If only I just would have been able to lava coil this feather like we were supposed to. I wouldn't have messed that up. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I don't, ha didn't have any red, white, and blue decks put together for today. You know, we had the 12 hour stream yesterday that ended up after midnight and didn't really put together anything else for today. No, I don't, I don't know the exact day that I'll be playing Grixis again. It's definitely sometime this weekend, you know, it'll be in, in the next couple of days. I don't, I don't know exactly when though. Yeah, I mean, we should have won that game. I messed that game up really bad. 
All right, but lesson learned. Chandra minus two is not until end of turn. You have to have your mana ready to go and everything before you minus two. So lesson learned. Let's get these fries. That's extra coil. Spell Pierce doesn't really work too well in this matchup. Hmm. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to be playing Living Twister because it doesn't die to the red removal spells. You know, it doesn't die to Reckless Rage and stuff. I guess maybe I'm supposed to be playing this card. I guess. I don't, I don't know what I want to be doing here. I kind of cut some of these two drops that died a shock. I like the Cavaliers. They're just so big, they don't die to the red removal spells. I probably should have just got rid of these things. That was the other card I was looking at. Should have definitely at least gotten rid of one of these things. Probably both of them. Pretty good looking hand here. See, so yeah, you trim the two mana creatures for for the two mana removal. The anthem creatures, cool. Thanks, Evo. All right, have fun at the Fourth of July party there. Hmm. Twista. I didn't. Thorn and Flame don't really do anything in this matchup. Talking about the Cavaliers? Cavalier of Thorn and Cavalier of Flame? They're really big. Thorn blocks Flyers, blocks Feather. So, of course, my plan, I think my plan was to play the Overgrowth Elemental next turn to put the counter on the Living Twister, but now I kind of want to put a counter on the Vine Mare. All right, well, we have to kill that thing. Always got to kill that thing. So, Omnath coming in. Really hoping we get to untap with Omnath and start putting counters on our, our creatures. You know, I can, like, play Vine Mare next turn and then put a counter on Vine Mare with Omnath. Should be nice. Because this is, you know, whenever you play a land, then you put a counter on one of your elementals. Please don't have Reckless Rage. No Reckless Rage.
So Risen Reef slows me down, but makes me a lot more powerful. Hmm. Yeah, this is. I just have a bottle of water here. Yeah, it is just always Reef, isn't it? So I guess I'm putting the counters on Living Twister. I don't really want to put counters on Omnath. Or, like, try to put a counter on Omnath and get blown out. By a Reckless Rage. But land was the best thing we could hit. Now if we draw a land, we get to double spell. Should be nice. Of course, if they block, want to keep the land in hand because if they blocked and had something that like made their tenth district legionnaire, you know, like a six six or a, or anything like that, you know, made it a little bit bigger, we would have been able to have the living twister try to shoot it. So twister does, so for three mana, it does two damage. I could only do four damage with the Twister. So presuming that they don't have... any... They don't have any spells here. We get to kill them. Do you want a little droth in here? 
Uh, no, I'm sorry, Alder 2. Only face the mass manipulation deck, so I'm sorry for you there. Yeah, if, you, if you're playing all the mass manipulation decks, that's where you want all the Veil of Summers. All right, can we get game three on the draw? All right, Thunderkin Awakener, what are you doing for me? Doesn't seem like very much. We do get to go find the Risen Reef with the Awakener. And then if they kill Risen Reef, we can bring it back with the other Awakener. Our opponent didn't cast that before attacking because they wanted to try to bait me into blocking. I mean, I'm not saying that, that their line was, was the best instead of just casting it twice. I don't, I don't know. I'm telling you why they did what they did. The Wakener doesn't seem very good. At least not, not here when you have nothing else. I guess I should just mulligan the hand, though, I, guess, I suppose. So we need more removal. I mean, we're just we're just really dead. Bleh. Living Twister at least doesn't die to the Reckless Rage immediately. They have to have two things.
always Krenko's. Awakener, can't you do something? Now, of course, we only, um, we basically only had lands and awakeners, but the awakeners looked really, really bad. So they're the kind of card that, you know, you need, you need the other stuff to to make them do anything but they really didn't just absolutely nothing it's one small game though for me playing the card A very small sample I mean the smallest of samples just one game alright keep this Ember Kitty. They're not really a card that I don't think you're going to want to be playing on turn two. I think this is a card to play later on in the game. Naya Feather now? Naya Feather. I'm not sure what, like, the ideal card for me to try to get with the Neoform is. Like, is it just Risen Reef? Am I supposed to just like play Trailblazer and then sack Trailblazer and grab Risen Reef? I suppose so. Yeah, I think so. You need to form the kitty. Oh. All right. Well, my plan was to get rid of the trailblazer, but yeah, I guess like we could have just gotten rid of the kitty first and gotten the risen reef first with, and then then played the trailblazer afterwards. So we get an extra trigger. So missed out on a Risen Reef trigger there.
So my plan was Blazer, but... The Blazer does make, like, all these Scorchers better. Keeping them around, we get 2-1 Scorchers. More lands. And Risen Reef is awesome. Do I let them kill Risen Reef? No, I shouldn't let them kill Risen Reef. Let's just attack with these things. Taking it all. Cranko. Hey, Campfire Studios. Two years of tier three subs. Thank you so much, Campfire. That's getting a whole lot of hype boats there. And our 10th sub of the day. Also, yeah, we played we played Grixis Control two days ago. You can see that, that video, of course, up on the YouTube channel. All right, so our 10th sub of the day gets us to a sub goal towards dun, 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 dun. that gets us towards a sub goal towards the um the next sub battle stream i'll go ahead and mark that down hmm No, I mean, my, my plan is to just get Omnath and kill them. Like, I'm assuming they're not going to block Risen Reef here, considering it's going to die. And so then they just take a bunch of damage. And then I go grab Omnath to kill them or come close. Two, four... Six, eight, ten. Yeah, Omnath kills him. Oh, I can't can't see that that file. Campfire Studios got to I gotta log into the Slack page for that. Oh, wait, they blocked the Risen Reef? Hmm. I just had lethal if I would have just played this. I suppose. Hmm. 
That was just unexpected. I was just not- I was really not expecting them to block the Risen Reef. They may not- they may not just understand that the Risen Reef was going to be sacrificed, honestly. Dang, looks like I'm dead. Well, that's only 13. They only have one more mana, never mind. I thought they had more mana. They only have the one mana left. So no, probably not dead. No, it's only 13. If they had more mana, they could have killed me. Definitely have the spells, like enough spells to kill me. Didn't have enough mana. I have a red party hat. It's It's the 4th of July. We have four lava coils in here. I haven't been drawing those too much. Am I supposed to be spell piercing? Don't really like these Thunderkin Awakeners in this matchup here, so I'm taking them out. They are good at bringing Risen Reefs back, but without Risen Reef, like, it, like as we saw like that other game, like if we don't, like when we have Risen Reef, it's it's okay. You can bring your Risen Reef back whenever the Risen Reef dies, because you just always have to assume it's died. But when you don't have Risen Reef, card's not doing too much. So let's cut that. And cut the Scorcher. Alright, let's try this. I didn't have time to make a Jeskai deck after the long 12 hour stream that we had last night. I wonder if our deck needs more removal in the sideboard. I mean, playing against feather decks is not something that's super common. I don't I don't know if we played against a feather deck at all, like the, during the whole 12 hours yesterday, but you know, we got paired against it twice in a row here. But it kind of seems like just four lava coils isn't really enough. That's what it's feeling like. I mean, we have the Omnaths too, I suppose, that those can kill things. Hmm. 
I guess I'm gonna go get... I guess I'm gonna go get Vine Mare. Otherwise they would just kill my creature. Vine Mare's got that hexproof. Hey Starman, happy fourth. Thanks for stopping by. And yeah, have fun with the family and everything. I mean, obviously they have the pump spell. They would kill my. They would trade here. Obviously, it's just, do I want to do that? Is what is the debate. I think if I play the overgrowth elemental on the vine mare, we do get to have. Yeah, you know, we can put we can put an extra counter on the vine mare. And make it a seven five. All right, lands nice. So we can play Risen Reef first, and we get a couple triggers here. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to YouTube the Chandra Tribal from yesterday. Yeah, that that was a really really fun deck. That was a good, good video for sure. I guess it's better to start with the Cavalier of Gales. So I don't really need to discard either of these cards. Um, we'll put you. And... Let's see, wait a minute. Let's put you first. And then you. Not like this. So next turn I draw the land and then loot away the land and grab the Neoform. Mostly. I mean, maybe I'm supposed to just keep the Chandra in hand with the extra land and just loot everything away to the Cavalier. Because the Chandra's not really doing anything right now. Not yet, at least. Alright. So I was gonna alright, so my plan there of course was to grab you know, we get the Neoform. I wasn't gonna cast the Neoform. I was gonna have the Chandra make two elementals and then activate the red cavalier to give everything plus one plus zero and haste and be able to swing on in there. Alright, we're one and one. Got through the feather deck.
how does the XP boost in the mastery tree work? Uh, you just it just boosts you up a level. Yeah, if you want to move up one level, you can. All right, going down to five. All right, so we're keeping keeping the three lands. I guess I have to get rid of Cavalier. I mean, Omnith. No, yeah, we're keeping Omnith, right? Maybe not. It's it's the tough part about game one. You know, we just don't know how good Lava Coil is. I could really, really regret putting Lava Coil at the bottom, or I would, could really regret keeping it on top. I suppose... Hmm. I suppose I'll keep it, though. I do like how Chandra can recast the coil also. So we have like Chandra that's like a decent threat, but then Chandra or like if we don't need the if we need more coils, we get to recast coil. Oh, I guess I did overlook the the fact that we couldn't I was thinking thinking too much about like which cards to keep that I did overlook. The fact that we I couldn't actually cast the Chandra the previous turn. Or, like, I couldn't cast the Chandra with the mana that we had. But thankfully we drew a red land. So we're good to go there. So yeah, I guess I probably should have kept the Omnath, but got really rewarded. Because not only did we draw the red land to cast Chandra, but then we also just drew another Omnath. Weird block. They said there's going to be more ways to get more levels than what there is right now. So they know that right now you can't actually get to level 100 in the 84 days that there is until the next set, but there's going to be other ways to get extra experience. So you don't need to panic about it. As long as you're playing every day, you should be able to get there. Go get him, buddies. Playing an Omnath on the Vanguard here pre-combat doesn't make a ton of sense because they can just pay the 4 life. And then they get to block also. Doing it second main means we either kill Vanguard or they, again, pay 4 life. So we're just dealing an extra point of damage here. If they pay the 4. Okay, no, they're just going to let the Vanguard die. And Storm, of course, I don't have any answers. I don't know if you're supposed, to, like, if you have to be playing every day and stuff. I'm just saying for now, like, that's a, a safe thing to be doing. I don't, I'm not saying that, like, that's how it's supposed to be or anything. I'm just saying how it is. I don't, it's nothing to disagree with me. I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying what they're, what's going on is right or anything like that. I'm just, just saying how things are. Risen Reef's a great draw, of course. Keeping this Chandra has worked out so, so well. A 
Chandra's just been awesome. Still get to minus two the Chandra and rebuy Lava Coil if we need it. Uh, Sir Chicken, this is yeah. This is just my third match with the deck. Um, I don't so I don't have a ton of experience still with it yet. But recommending to craft a deck. It's the kind of thing that it's kind of different for every person. Of you know, it's hard. It's hard for me to to do that. It's it's kind of the stuff is you kind of have to decide on your own because for some people crafting a deck means a lot more than for other people. This is disgusting. Say hi to my fiery friends. <laughs> Just six resident reef triggers there. That was Ridiculous. And then we're going to be... We still haven't played a land yet, so we're going to be able to play that land, get another Omnath trigger. That was a mold of five. <laughs> but basically... Right now, there's not really a metagame. We don't know what the top decks are or anything like that. So if you are trying to, like, craft one deck that you're planning on playing uh, just that deck for, you know, two months and stuff, it's really hard to craft a deck right now. You may need to wait a week or two until uh, we really start flushing out the best stuff. Um, so that's a recommendation there. Risen Reef is disgusting. It, it certainly feels like Risen Reef is going to be if not the most powerful thing to be doing in the format, one of the most powerful things to be doing in the format. Um, I feel like the Sultai deck that we were just playing is more powerful than this deck, as far as Risen Reef deck goes, decks go. Like, I think that I think that Sultai deck's more powerful than this one. That Sultai deck has a lot going for it. I'm going to try playing these big Chandras. They can minus and suit the board. Hey, Dink Bucks. Uh, Rex, I do not know much against uh, much about badges. I know you can only have three badges, though. I do know that. And so I guess you just have these three badges. I don't know if there's like anything in the settings that if you're supposed to have more than three badges, like where you can change them. I don't know. But you, I know you can't have more than three badges at a time. Risen Reef's too good to keep this. So we, you know, we have a removal spell that we can play on turn two, and hopefully by then, you know, by turn three, since we're on the draw, that one of our first three draw steps is a land where we get to play the Reef. New card for Nexus? Yeah. Yeah, I think there's new stuff for Nexus. Um... Off the top of my head, the the Autumn Veil card seems good for the deck against like discard heavy decks. Um, I think there's something else. I think there's other things for the Nexus deck. I can't really think of exactly what though. I think there was something else that was pretty important for Nexus, but I can't remember what. Drawn from Dreams. That that's the card. Yeah, Drawn from Dreams. That's a good one. Hmm. 
All right, so we'll coil the Seeker. And attack the Sorin. What's this activate ability? Wow, that thing can get kind of big. I don't think there's a lot for Esper Hero as far as like main deck wise. I think that Esper Hero maybe only gets some sideboard stuff, but they don't really work with Hero. But I like the the black hate card that's a destroys a green or a white uh, creature or planeswalker. That's the first card to come to mind for Esper. Honestly, Esper didn't gain too much, I don't think. I could certainly be missing something. Of course. Alright, looking for lands. There we go. Noxious Grasp. That's the name of that card. Sultai Hero? Well, Hero is a white card. You can't really play Sultai Hero. Could play Bant Hero. I mean, Bant Hero with Element with Risen Reef. Could be nice. Yeah, land enters tapped off a of Risen Reef. This is but a taste of my power. Yeah, you could have Risen Reef and Arcane Adaptation. So every every token you make with Hero Precinct One is an elemental. Yeah, Soren is really cool. You can put Risen Reef in a deck in any deck. Not just with elementals, yeah, you can put it in with any deck. Alright, lands, thank you. So Neoform is the card that's green. That we can't cast as unclaimed territory. I just want to make sure we have the three blue for the Cavalier. Because that's the card in our hand. The 12 hour stream went really well. I had a lot of fun, especially our last, the last deck uh, was Chandra Tribal, and it was a ton of fun. Really enjoyed playing that deck. Dun, dun, dun. Obviously, we draw the Neoform. Why not? <laughs> yeah, definitely catch that one on the YouTubes. That was a good one. So they can sacrifice the Zealot to kill the Ember Cat. Nope, not doing that. Welcome to the family.
And we're just drawing more Neoforms. Why not? And draw land, please. Omnia. Alright, that'll do. Get out here, Soren. This is not my final demise. So Mavern Fane only triggers whenever Oh no, Mavern Fane does trigger on itself. Never mind. It's it's only non tokens, that's the thing. It only triggers on non tokens. No. There's no lands. Yeah, Chandra Tribal. From yesterday. It was a lot of fun. See if I can get a link for you. A lot of views on the YouTube. 4.6 thousand views. That's awesome. That's really cool. Over 100 likes. Dang, a whole lot of com comments I should probably start replying to. All right, Risen Reef's not going to put a land into play on tap. I don't have to worry about. Don't have to worry about potentially Neo forming away the Umber Cat. Yeah, Cavaliers are, are very strong. Do not fear, my friend. Bleh. See in yourself what I see in you. this. Alright, so yeah, we put the land back on top, so we need to go put that into play. <clears throat> Get some ramping on. Ramping going on here. Alright, so we can we can play the Scourger the Scourger and Neoform away the Scourger. Oh no, Dead Presence. Is that thing a vampire? I don't know, it's a nightmare? That is a nightmare. You can either find the Soul Tide Cavaliers deck going through Stream Decker there or checking the YouTube channel. Either one, you know, it's the the first video on YouTube and you can find the link from, from YouTube over to Stream Decker. That's where you go get the lists. Hmm. 
I'm thinking about neoforming. For the Risen Reef, putting Risen Reef into play, and then Omnath afterwards. I'm like looking at the list here. I don't. I don't really see a better play. I guess that elemental does. I mean, we have to kill this dread presence, right? Like that dread presence is just going to kill us. I guess if we would have gotten... Or just like for, for next next time, if we go grab Overgrown Elemental, we can maybe gain some life. We need creatures to die. Oh, come on. Unbreakable Formation? Ugh. Why does this have to be a shock land? I need I need eight mana. I need to play all these things. Well, I mean, I have to play this. I have to get three creatures. Ugh. Wait, why'd I draw a card there? Oh, Omnath draws a card when you have eight or more lands. Bleh. Hey, Rex, thanks for that donation. Thanks for always being positive. Love your patriotism. Keep it up. Ah. Thanks so much. There, Rex. Thank you kindly. Okay. So. Got a block with five things. Guess I have to just kill the Mavern Fane. Guess we got to trade here. But then they're gonna have this Sky Marcher Aspirant. And block that, stay alive. Ugh, this is just gross. That Legion Lieutenant. That was a really that was really a killer. I 
I mean, I'd have to kill the flyer. Yeah, like I would, I would have to do something about that flyer. If I would have blocked it, if I would have the Cavalier of Gales die. Neo form the flame cavalier and kill the board. Does only it does damage to opponents and planeswalkers. I don't even have any lands in the graveyard right now anyway. Sorry, I was dealing with the troll. Um, play this card. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I wanted all my red lands tapped. Thank you, Auto Tapper. That's exactly what I wanted. All of my red lands tapped. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah, we need, like, yeah, the six mana Chandra would have been a really clutch draw to wipe the battlefield there. I was feeling okay about it until that Legion Lieutenant. That Legion Lieutenant there, that, that last turn, really, really messed us up. All right, so... Uh, all right, so we went one two with the deck. So big thing about the deck, I feel like we we really need more more removal in this deck. Um, that's that's the thing. Three spell pierce, three veil of summer. Like we need more removal. Um, yeah, like these these cards are just pretty pretty narrow. I talked a lot about veil of summer with the Sultai Cavaliers a little bit ago. Um, I don't really understand Spell Pierce, to be honest. Maybe I've just like not been able to counter things too often with Spell Pierce, but I, I just always prefer Negate over Spell Pierce myself. There's just too many times like where Spell Pierce doesn't actually counter stuff. Um, now, the Muldratha is like a... That's... Um, Muldratha is like a test card as like something to bring in against uh, uh, removal heavy decks is like, you know, you can neoform away a five drop to go grab it or you can get it with unclaimed territory. It was just it was kind of like something cute to try out. But yeah, no, Muldratha is probably not that necessary. But it does definitely feel like we need more removal in here. Um, I don't know if like, I don't know if we want... Uh, entrancing melody in the sideboard like maybe that's that's a card that we want like three of or like you know two or three sorry two or three entrancing melodies um for like these for like other smaller creature decks that that could be a card there um i was not impressed with thunderkin awakener But I guess we're just we're just playing against other creature matchups where Thunder can awaken or can it really ever attack? Um, I don't think Veil vale Summer is that great, Poner. I mean, there's little Teferi still in the metagame. And playing cards that are you can only do anything at instant speed is 
is a challenge against Little Teferi. Um, this doesn't really f feel like the best Cavalier of Thorns deck, but it's not bad. But yeah, the the scourger the scourger awakener stuff. I feel like you could probably be doing better things than that. But you know, maybe again, it's it's entirely possible that it was just kind of the matchups that we were playing. Why well, I don't like those as much. Um, yeah, I guess this deck does a pretty good job of killing little Teferi, That is true, especially this card. But yeah, Risen Reef is awesome. Omnath was awesome. I wish we had, you know, I just kind of wish we had some more interaction. Wish we had, like, more more cards to Neoform into that were interaction than, like, just Omnath. I don't know exactly what it would be, though. Like, just th trying to think off the top of my head. I don't know exactly what, what those cards are. But uh, I definitely think that I definitely think that in a Neoform deck that you should be playing Reclamation Sage instead of Thrashing Brontodon. Because you know, Brontodon, of course, forces you to sacrifice it, where uh, Reclamation Sage, you can either sacrifice a two-drop to go get your Sage, or after you play your Sage, it's a really good card to Neoform away to something else. I think you want, with Neoform, you want Enter the Battlefield stuff, not Sacrifice stuff. And it's just easier to cast when you're playing all these blue, all these blue red lands, and mountain and these unclaimed territories. You know, we don't have like a ton of actual green, so green green is tough to cast. Also, um, well, there's only one cavalier left in my deck to neoform a scorcher for a cavalier. There's only the cavalier thorns left in my deck, and it wasn't. At that point, I wanted I played the Creeping Trailblazer to help block their creatures and everything, help my all my one ones and stuff block all their creatures. Uh, but then they they played the the Legion's Lieutenant that really messed that up. Um, so there we go. Those are a couple of things about the deck. So yeah, don't don't love having all six of these. Especially all three of the Vale of Summers. Should have Rex Age over Brontodon. But it's kind of more removal in general. For the aggro decks. I, and I don't have a great suggestion for that. Um, but yeah, I wasn't very impressed with Scampering Scourger and Thunderkin Awakener. Alright, that's Neoform Elementals though. Risen Reef, Omnath, Chandra. Those cards are incredible. The Cavaliers are good. Um, there we go. I was pretty impressed with Overgrowth Elemental. I think this card did pretty good for us. I liked this card. It was a card that I wish I could have out in a play more than what we had. Alright, so if you're watching this video later on YouTube, um, oh, Dire Fleet Daredevil would be a good sideboard card here. Yeah, I like Dire Fleet in the sideboards for this kind of deck. Dire Fleet's great with Neoform also. To sac you know sacrifice your dire fleet yeah that's that's a really good card because yeah you with neoform you do want like creatures in your deck yeah that's a good card but anyway yeah so thank you so much for watching neoform elementals here um please hit that like and subscribe buttons over there and i will see you for another video